Hello and a very warm welcome as we gather together in this way to worship God in our monthly district online service. This service marks the first Sunday in Advent and I am especially grateful to the Reverend Michaela Youngson, the Assistant Secretary of the Conference, who is our preacher this morning. Thank you, Mickey, for contributing in that way to this service. So as we gather, let us prepare our hearts and minds in the presence of God, wherever we are, that we might worship him in spirit and truth. In the midst of darkness, God brings a new light. Thanks be to the God of light. In the midst of confusion and fear, God brings hope and peace. Thanks be to the God of peace. In the midst of strife and stress, God comforts and soothes us. Let us praise God who truly loves us and brings us new life. Amen. Let us pray. As the nights grow longer and days are often dim and darkness limits our vision, we look to you, loving God, seeking your light for our lives and offer wondering worship to you as we feel a fresh hope born in our hearts. Advent Creator, before anything was, you were. In the swirling darkness of chaos, your voice was heard, the voice of wisdom bringing order and progression, the voice of love calling forth all life and humanity, the voice of hope seeing goodness in all you had brought to being. Advent Creator, our Maker and our Minder, we worship, worship and, and adore, adore you. Advent Saviour, you came and will always come as light into the darkness of this world. Light that nothing can put out. You shine into our minds 
through the Word made flesh, illuminating the Kingdom values for our lives, showing us the love that will not let us go, offering us the hope that lights our walk with you. Advent Saviour, God with us, we, we worship, worship and adore, adore you. Advent Spirit, like the flickering flames of the Advent candles, you catch our eyes and point our thoughts to God. You are the light of faith burning deep inside us, shedding light on God's purpose for our lives, radiating the warmth of God's love for us and everyone, shining with the hope that the good news of Christ ignites. Advent Spirit, fire of love, we, we worship, worship and, and adore, adore you. And a prayer of confession. Advent God, you offer us light, but dazzled by your goodness we linger in the shadows, hiding ourselves from the all-consuming power of your love. Advent God, you offer us hope, but afraid of what might lie ahead, we live instead in quiet despair, shielding ourselves from change unwilling to face the uncertainties of a new life in you. Advent God, you offer us love. You offer us yourself as a dependent baby. You offer us yourself as a suffering saviour. You offer us yourself as a servant king. But we acknowledge with sadness how often we have failed to take up your offers of light, hope and love. And we seek your forgiveness. God of hope, we turn to you again to hear the words of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The lesson is taken from Luke 21, verses 25 to 36. There will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress amongst nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. 
As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Creator God, open our hearts to your word and your word to our hearts. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's good to be with you on this Advent Sunday 
and to reflect with you on the passages of scripture we heard first of all from Thessalonians and then Luke's Gospel. In the letter to the Thessalonians the writer reminds the readers to thank God to be joyful and that night and day they must pray earnestly um, that they might see each other face to face. A sense of longing for restoration, a sense of longing to see those that we miss. And the writer says, may God make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. And these words seem in some contrast to Luke's gospel, where we hear about the signs of the times. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and the earth itself. There will be distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. We know from just a couple of weeks ago when COP26 was all the, all the news we heard about, how the people of the Pacific Islands are indeed confused by the roaring of the wind and the waves, the sea rises and they're losing their home. But right across the world, the climate crisis is having an effect on the lives of everybody and particularly costly on the lives of those who are poor. And we groan with creation, wondering if the leaders of the world can get enough sense of the signs of the times, can have the wisdom to read the signs of the times sufficiently to know how to respond and what to do. And we too, in our prayers and the way we make our choices about our, our consumerism, the things we buy, the things we eat, even the presents we buy one another at Christmas, how does every action we take be one that is about abounding in love for one another and for all and about working perhaps differently to the way that the signs of the time suggest that we are. That passage from Luke is full of fear and fainting and foreboding, full of a sense of uh, a time coming to an end and wondering what will beyond it be beyond it hoping perhaps, as we hope in Advent, for a new beginning, looking towards a second coming of Jesus, the Messiah, the one who will transform all creation. And when that happens, even the powers of heaven themselves will be shaken. And the writer of Luke's Gospel doesn't say, so put your heads down and look down and be frightened, but says instead, stand up, Raise your heads because redemption is drawing near. Luke points us to the signs of the times of his times and says they, these things, this crisis of existence points towards God becoming fully part of our lives in a way that will transform creation. So we are to be alert, says, Paul, says Luke, at all times and so does the writer to the Thessalonians talking about praying night and day looking forwards. If you're a Harry Potter fan and have read the books or seen the films you'll know that there's a character called Mad-Eye Moody, Professor Moody, whose theme, whose catchphrase is constant vigilance, constant vigilance and Moody is saying to his students be on the lookout all the time for for wicked things, for, for people with bad intent, for evil things, this way come. And he's a bit like the witches in Macbeth. He's looking out, he's pointing out all the things that could possibly go wrong. And all his equipment is about checking out the uh, whether there's someone hiding in the shadows who might do you harm. Um, and we might be tempted to think that this passage from Luke is about constant vigilance. Well, it is about constant vigilance, but I would suggest it's a different kind of vigilance. I think we do need to be alert at all times and the climate crisis and creation under stress and wars and poverty on our own streets and across the world are things we need to pay proper attention to. And this existential crisis that we face, we're not the first generation to feel that the world may be coming to a disastrous end. This has been felt by generation after generation. And we can live with daily anxiety and the pandemic has not helped us with that anxiety, expecting disaster, hoarding things. You'll remember 
about 18 months ago where people were rushing out and emptying the supermarket shelves of toilet rolls as though that was the most worrying thing we could possibly run out of. I don't know about you, but I've got a few old copies of the Methods Recorder I could cut up if I really needed to. But we do hoard and we don't seem to be able to fulfil our lives, that emptiness and that worry and anxiety through constant consumerism. You know, comfort shopping, it's a bit like comfort eating. You can never really get enough to be satisfied. We long for security. And we see in the scriptures sometimes a desperate portrait of human existence, that call for constant vigilance. But I want us to be vigilant in a different way. And I think Advent calls us and God through the scriptures calls us to a different kind of vigilance. Because God's answer is to awaken in us gratitude, to be thankful, to be joyful and to call calls us, God calls us to love one another, to abound in lo love for one another and all. So our love isn't just for each other, for those in our families, for those in the church. Our love is for all people and all creation. And what we're to be constantly on the lookout for is not that there's some great evil uh, lurking around every corner. The things we're to be vigilant for are the signs of God's grace acting in the world the signs of God's love, the signs of God's activity that we are called to join in with to bring about the end of suffering for people, to bring the good news of Jesus. And the scripture writers tell us that God will strengthen us so we can be alert and ready. We can stand up and raise our eyes and not be beaten down by the difficulties that we see all around us. We can notice that the impossible God is working wonders in our world even today. And God, we hear during the Advent season that God does the impossible. God can straighten the crooked highway and smooth what is rough. And God's power of love is greater than all disaster and will restore and save us. And all are to be included. And we're reminded very powerfully in Luke's Gospel that whilst all things may pass away, even heaven and earth, God's word will not pass away. And we remember those stirring words at the beginning of John's gospel that talk about in the beginning was the word. The word that was there in the beginning will be there forever. We hear so many words at the moment, some that we feel are empty or hypocritical, words that are untrue or skewed and tri twisted, where truth is the victim of people's agendas, whether it's the media or politics or business or whatever it might be. Even the words fake news were invented to mask lies and clumsy rhetoric. We hear so many words and yet God's word is not a constant chatter. It is an eternal sounding of love like hitting just the right note on a piano or the bell that sounds in just the right tone, an eternal sound of love. That is God's word through Jesus Christ. There from the beginning of all time and it will not pass away. So we're left with some fairly uh, challenging demands during Advent. We're challenged to be uh, keep watch or be constantly vigilant we're challenged to prepare, to get ready, and we're challenged to be satisfied, to be thankful for what we have, not constantly looking beyond for more and more. Yet how can we be satisfied when people suffer and creation itself groans in pain? But we do not give in, we do not hang our heads in despair. It's a bit like that song, walk tall, walk straight and look the world right in the eye. You might know it. We're not to give in. We're to walk tall, standing up, standing up for love, for justice, for peace, standing up for God's love, responding to God's call to love one another and love all. There's lots of love around at this time of year, but some of it, well, it's a bit schmaltzy. You know, all those Christmas movies and I love them. The Muppet Christmas Carol is my favourite. Um, the the run-up to Christmas is often a season of hiding. It's a kind of denial fest. 
hiding behind tinsel and commercialization and those those cheesy movies and yet advent itself is a different preparation it's a season of honesty a season where we stand in the face of all the cheesiness and say we are here because god has created us because god loves us and god saves us and will go on loving us and go on saving us even beyond our own knowing advent is also a yearning a yearning for home a yearning for the second coming when creation will be complete it reminds me of the welsh word hereith hereith which is it doesn't translate well into english but it's a yearning for home beyond homesickness a yearning a nostalgic longing for home for what was yet we don't long long as christians for what has been we long for what will come through christ and so as i say our constant vigilance is not to focus on the harsh realities of the world though we must look them straight in the eye but it is to be constantly on the lookout for signs of god's love breaking in hints of glorious grace to notice God's invitation, to join in mission, to share good news and transform the world. So as we prepare in this season for a new creation made whole in Christ, how do we prepare for that home that we long for? We put, we, when we get ready to go home, we put things in order, perhaps we make lists, we set our minds on the destination and as we decorate our churches and homes in this season, perhaps we're not just hiding behind the schmaltz and glitter of the tinsel of the season. Perhaps we're painting a portrait of God's realm, colourful and alive, even in the depths of winter and in the face of a world that seems determined to follow a destructive path. How do we prepare? As we light our Advent candles, we're reminded again that the Jesus we wait for is the light of the world. That light is the beacon we follow when we're lost in the dark. As we see the signs of the times, may we see the signs of God's activity, bringing hope, love and grace to a world in need. And we, we, may we too be bearers of the light of Christ into the world. Amen.
our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. As we pray for our troubled world, for our church and for others, at a time when the future may seem bleak, we light candles to remind us of our Advent hope, the coming of the light of the world, the coming of God with us. We light a candle as we pray for hope. God of love, we pray for hope. Hope for the future of the world, overshadowed by climate change and violence. Hope for the future of our communities, where many feel lost or unloved. Hope for the future of the church, facing so many challenges and difficulties. Show us the wise path leading to justice and a better future. And we pray for the future of ourselves and those we love. God of hope, help, help us, us to, to walk, walk in your light. We light, we light a, a candle, candle as, as we pray for justice. God of justice, teach us your ways. Open our eyes to exploitation and oppression. Open the minds of the leaders and powerful of the nations and show them that justice is the wise path to peace. We pray that we might strive for justice in the way we live our lives. God of hope, help, help us, us to walk in your light. We, we light, light a candle as we pray for peace. God of peace, teach us the ways of the Prince of Peace. Open our eyes to selfishness and greed. Show us how to live with respect and understanding for one another. Open the minds of the leaders and the powerful of the nations and show them that peace is the wise path to hope. We pray that we might seek to live in peace with others. God of hope, help, help us, us to, to walk in your light. We light a candle as, as we, we pray, pray for love. love. God of hope, teach us your ways. Open our eyes to see where you are at work in the world. Show us what you are calling us to do and be. Open our minds and make us ready for your coming. Open our hearts to the saving love of your Son. And may your Spirit guide us along the wise path to you. We pray for the grace to radiate your love to those in need of help or comfort. God of hope, help, help us to walk, walk in your light. light. 
God, in Christ you came to show us the ways of justice, peace and love. You came to bring us hope for ourselves and for the world, for now and forever. We make our prayers in the Saviour's name and in the confidence of the hope he brings. Amen. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. My thanks once again to all who have contributed to this service and especially uh, the Reverend Michaela Jungson. We're very grateful. A prayer of blessing. May the God of everlasting peace make us holy in all things that we may be ready at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all this day and for evermore. Amen.